welcome back. Today I'm going to be giving you some recommendations that I think are really fun to read during October for Halloween. Now I've said this multiple times but I am such a baby and such a pansy when it comes to anything scary. So I'm going to be sticking more along of creepy, eerie, kind of paranormal, sci-fi, and books with like magic and stuff. The first book I have is Through the Woods by Emily Carroll. This is a collection of graphic novels and these are actually pretty creepy. I would say this is kind of a long borderline horror for me. Some of the drawings are, I mean it's gorgeous, but they're really kind of gruesome and there's a lot of blood and death and I mean it's fantastic but it, if you're reading this at night in the dark it can it gets a, a little creepy. Next I have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I didn't think I was gonna like it. I thought I was gonna be really scared of Frankenstein but I really enjoyed it. Of Frankenstein's not actually the monster, it's Dr. Frankenstein's monster. So Dr. Frankenstein's the one that bring the monster to life and there is a lot of kind of gore, death, kind of gruesome parts to the book so it's definitely a good book to read during Halloween. Next I have Harry Potter by JK Rowling. Personally I think Harry Potter is just great for the holidays. It's perfect to read during Christmas, Thanksgiving, but also really during Halloween as well. There's like ghosts and werewolves and magic. There is a lot of death. It gets pretty dark sometimes and I actually remember pretty vividly when I read the fourth book. I read it at night and I could not sleep after that graveyard scene. It definitely has that creepy effect at times. Next I have Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. I thought it was going to be really scary and for such a long time I really stayed away from it but turns out it's not as scary as I thought it was gonna be but it does have um, eerie and some creepiness to it. There are monsters plus the pictures Pictures, the black and white pictures really add to kind of the creepiness eerie effect to the book like this picture in particular this is definitely a really good series to pick up during Halloween next I think any stories by Edgar Allan Poe is really that is also pretty horror the telltale heart is the story that really stuck with me since we read it um, in high school and that really creeped me out if you want to be creeped out um but you want to read something fairly short Edgar Allan Poe is definitely the way to go. Another great series to read during Halloween is the Sookie Stackhouse series by Charlene Harris. They did sort of a spin-off TV show, um, True Blood with HBO, uh, that is definitely for a mature audience. So if you are interested in watching that show, just kind of keep that in mind. Um, it's pretty vulgar. There's nudity. Rated R for sure. But I really like this uh, Sookie Stackhouse series. Um, there's a lot of vampires, a lot of paranormal werewolves in it. And what I like is that the vampires are kind of those traditional bad vampires. They can't come out in the day. Silver affects them. They can get staked. It's very bloody and gory. Next I have The Diviners by by Libba Bray. This is set in 1920s in New York and we follow our main character who is able to sense um, what someone is feeling or kind of see what like their past or like see what they're doing by touching an object and there are all these gruesome murders happening around New York City at this time and so she's trying to help kind of uncover the murderer. There is is a lot of different abilities that are able to be done um, with the diviners. There is like a scene with the Ouija board at the beginning that is just really creepy. Anything with Ouija boards to me just really creeps me out. So if a book has a scene with a Ouija board, I definitely think it is Halloween appropriate. Going off the Ouija board tangent, I have another and that is The Unbecoming of Meyer Dyer by Michelle Hodkin. I absolutely love this book. I read it all night in the dark. I couldn't stop and there are there was a point where I had to turn on the light because there are some scenes that are pretty creepy. Our main character, she bas she wakes up one morning and in the hospital and realizes that she was part of a tragic accident that killed her boyfriend and her two friends and she is trying to kind of figure out what happened 
but she's also going through PTSD and she's pretty much going crazy and this is in first person so we're going crazy with her she sees things she does things it just it gets pretty creepy and there are some scenes that are pretty dark as well next I have the coldest girl in Coal Town by Holly Black this is a standalone and it looks a little bit um, chunky but it's really not it reads pretty quickly and I read the audio book to it which I really enjoyed so if you're interested in the audiobook I think this is a pretty good one in this world um, vampires are known to society and they are kept in these isolated areas called coal towns and our main character ends up going to one of these coal towns there are some pretty gory scenes as well it's young adult appropriate gory so it's not anything that's gonna make you feel nauseous or anything like that uh, but there are vampires of course and these are m more along the darker uh, horror vampires I really enjoyed this book I thought it was a lot of fun not to mention I think the cover itself as well as really you know Halloween appropriate I like the hand and it kind of reminds me a little bit of like the Adams family it's very very Halloween appropriate. Next I have Flowers in the Attic by V.C. Andrews. It is considered a gothic genre. There isn't any paranormal or fantasy to this book but it is just the idea of it alone is really scary and freaky. Basically it's about these four kids and their father dies so their mother brings them to their grandparents house to live but their grandfather cannot know that they're alive so they are kept up in the attic for two and a half years something something outrageous like that I can't remember the exact amount of time but they are never allowed to leave the attic there's also mature content but the reason I put it on this list is just because the idea of it is so freaky and scary I mean could you imagine being locked up in an attic for years and never being able to leave and sometimes they were starved and sometimes they were beaten and it's just it it's just overall a really really freaky concept to me and lastly another great Halloween recommendation is Pride and Prejudice and Zombies by Jane Austen and Seth Graham Smith is basically taking the story of Pride and Prejudice and just adding zombies to it the movie actually was just recently released and I, I really liked the movie I thought it was a lot of fun I thought it was really entertaining but if you like Pride and Prejudice and if you're a Jane Austen fan and you also like Halloween it might be fun to pick up this book it's a pair of Pride and Prejudice but it's got zombies and of course zombies is definitely appropriate for Halloween All right, guys, well, that is it for this video. Comment down below. Let me know some of your favorite Halloween recommendations. And let me know if you guys are scaredy cats just like me because I can't do anything horror. Even thriller sometimes is a little too much for me. I get, I get scared way too easily and it gives me nightmares. 